So good evening. This is a, a short practice, it's another request for um, stiff upper back, thoracic spine and shoulders. So uh, maybe a, a 30 minute practice, uh, so relatively short, good for everybody, um, but specific to, 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 to mobilizing upper back and shoulders. Um, so it's very common for the upper back to round a little bit, especially if we're sitting often, if we work at a desk, um, and as we age, you know, the upper back often becomes more um, kyphotic, more rounded. So this is a really nice counter for that, even if you don't feel so much that your upper back and shoulders are, are stiff. So give this a go anyway and see how it feels. So we're going to start as always with just a few breaths. So you can close your eyes and just drop into your space. Drop into your base. Notice the way your inhalation feels. And the way your exhalation feels. Focusing on the upper back, so try and bring your breath into your upper back behind your heart and feel some expansion there as you begin your practice. And then when you feel that you're ready, you can take your arms out to the sides and just allow your arms to lengthen so you feel that you're opening all the way across your chest and through both of your arms. And then when you're ready, cross your right arm over your left arm and bring yourself, if you can, into an eagle bind. If it's too much to, to bind your arms together, just come as far as you can and maybe bring your hands to your upper arms or your shoulders. If you can bind, you're crossing the upper arm, so above the elbow, and then you're bringing your, your forearms, your hands together. And we want to lift the chest and sit tall. Feel the opening across the, the back of your shoulders. And then breathe into your upper back. So again, as if you're trying to bring your, your breath and some expansion behind your heart. And you can feel here the way your shoulder blades move away from the, the midline. And take one more breath. Very good, and then go the other way. Bring your arms around behind you now. You might just catch to your wrists or your forearms. For some of you, maybe you can catch to your own elbows behind your back or your own upper arm. And you lift your heart, you widen your core bones, you roll your shoulders back, and you breathe into your chest. release your arms and you come wide again, you let the arms sail away, really lengthen. And then we cross over this time left over right. So same thing, eagle bind if you can, maybe just hugging your arms around you if eagle bind is too much. Lift the elbows until you feel the stretch across your upper back and around the backs of your shoulders. And then breathe into that space between your shoulder blades, behind your heart. And then imagine that with your exhales, you can rinse away some of the stiffness and tension in your upper back. And 
turn and when you're ready you release your arms and you come around behind you, take hold of your wrists, your, your forearms, your elbows, your upper arms, just as far as you can reach, roll the shoulders back, widen the collarbones, open your belly space and your chest space and breathe. You can release from here. Bring yourself over and onto your hands and knees. If you need to um, loosen your, your hips from, from sitting, you can just rock side to side or circle your hips. And when you're ready, you're sinking back into Balasana Child's Pose. You might feel that you just need to, to glide forward and back a couple of times, especially if your hips and knees feel a bit tight. So you reach your arms forward, wiggle out, maybe lift one shoulder, then the other tease out the right side waist and the left side waist. And then when you're ready, you lower your head down and onto your mat. Now, if it's too much to have your head all the way down on the mat, you can use a cushion or a block underneath your forehead. And we're looking to bring breath and awareness into our backs again. So you breathe between your shoulder blades. You breathe into your back ribs. Try and feel that the expansion of your breath helps to open your, your upper back, your thoracic spine and your back ribs. And take another breath here. You bring yourself up onto your knees and your forearms. Make sure you have good space here. You don't want your knees too close to your elbows, so you can lengthen your spine. And this is like Madri Asana. <clears throat> you're rounding your back, so you're drawing your tail under, your chin in towards your chest. Really press with your elbows and your forearms and try and bring as much movement into your upper back as you can. Try and look as far in towards your navel as you can. You draw your tail under. And then move the other way and open your frontal space. Now draw the heart through and try and feel the mobilization into your upper back. Now, I really like this version of Madriyasana for mobilizing the upper back and the thoracic spine. So go again on your exhale round. On your inhale, you bring your heart forward. Really try and get into your upper back. Exhale round. And then again, coming forward. Try not to collapse into your lower back, but really bring movement into your upper back. Let's go again. Exhale. And inhale. Exhale. And inhale. Perfect. Just holding here for an extra breath. So you're bringing that extension through your, your spine and into your upper back and you feel between your shoulder blades. Mm. And when you're ready, we're going to take this back and into child's pose again. So you sit back towards your heels, 
stretch out your arms, release the shoulders as you sit back. And then here we're going to stretch the arms as far forward as we can. And then we place the elbows down and the hands in prayer position. We keep the elbows where they are, but we flex the elbows and bring the thumbs around behind the head. Now, you might not feel stretched straight away here, so lift your hips an inch or two, walk your elbows forward an inch, and really plug your elbows in. So you stick your elbows to the mat, and then you drop your hips back again towards your heels, and you should feel the opening now through your shoulders and through your underarms. And if you're not feeling it, you can just repeat that adjustment. So the hips lift an inch, you walk the elbows forward an inch, plug them in, stick them to the mat, and then stretch the hips back until you feel, you feel it in the skin through your, your underarms, through the backs of your arms, you feel it through your triceps maybe. And you take a breath or two here. Coming out of child's pose, we're coming this time into a tabletop pose, so up and onto our hands and knees. And we're going to be opening, <coughs> opening the shoulders and all the way through the upper back and the chest. When you're opening with your right arm, I want you to think about opening from here, from the front of your left shoulder. So maybe bring your right hand to, to this point. Can you see where I am? So your right hand is right here, just on the, the upper left corner of your chest. And open this shoulder first, the left shoulder first, so you start to turn your, your chest and your torso first. And then run your right hand over your chest as if you're encouraging this opening here. And then take that arm all the way up and towards the ceiling. So you open all the way through your heart lines. You get a nice rotation in your upper back and your thoracic spine. And then you can slowly bring that hand down. We're going to do the same thing going the other way. So your left hand will come to your upper right chest, the front of your right shoulder, and you turn. So you don't start to reach out with your arm. You turn your chest first and use the hand. It's like um, you're giving a, a, a self-adjustment. You know, imagine that I'm there with you and I'm just guiding the chest open. You take that left shoulder back, you feel the opening around your heart and then you just let that left arm unfurl and reach up. You come down slowly. We're going to do the right side again. So right hand to the left shoulder, across your right chest, all the way up. And then slowly down. And one more coming to the left. So not in too much of a hurry here, really draw the chest open. Reach up and hold for a second. And then slowly back down. Good. You can take a, a breath here to rest. And then when you're ready, a shoulder circle, so a shoulder clock, so your right arm is forward, but then uh, just like you did before, you open your, your chest, your heart space, so you're opening through the left shoulder and the left side of the chest as well, the right arm comes all the way around and back and down, and then with your left forward, open the chest. All the way around. <laughs> Perfect. Ah, one more to each side. All the way around. And then relax.
Now, when you're ready, you're going to come onto your belly. So we're coming into a sphinx pose. If you feel that you need some padding under the front of your pelvis, you can grab yourself a blanket here. You come all the way onto your belly. You can just put your forehead down for the first moment and take a, a breath or two here. And even being here might feel a bit challenging if your upper back is, is very, very stiff. Now when you're ready, you come up and onto your forearms. We're coming into Sphinx Pose. Now if you bring your elbows all the way in, the chances are what you'll be doing is, is using your, your lower back to do all of the work. We, we kind of hinge in the, the lumbar spine. So I want you to bring your arms further forward. So feel that your, your low ribs are, are on the mat. You're not lifting your, your low ribs away from the mat. You're certainly not lifting your navel away from the mat. So your lower back is not doing all of the work. You reach your legs back, you press into your forearms, you draw your heart forward. Now try and bring the work into your upper back. Make your upper back here do the work rather than your lower back. And the further forward you bring your arms, the more you're asking it of your upper back rather than your lower back. So don't think that the steeper your sphinx pose is, the better. It's not really the the case. You just want to hit the stiff spot and mobilise that part of your spine rather than always mobilising the more flexible part which moving in this direction is probably your lumbar spine. So try and get into your upper back. A lot of us in, in this posture will be extending the lower back but still rounding flexing into upper back so really give it your attention try and widen your collarbones try and draw your chest forward so it's an active sphinx pose your legs are reaching back you're using your forearms to help you draw your heart forward Stay here for maybe another two or three breaths if we can. Try and move the, the breath all the way through the posture. One more. Mm, slowly lower down, breathe into your back. Maybe give your hips a, a rock here, that might help to soften and relax your back again. And then in your own time, ease your way back and into child's pose. So just slowly, slowly. Mm, take yourself back and sit on your heels. Mm, the longer we spend in a sphinx pose or a back bend, the more slowly our body will ask us to move into the, the counter pose, the child's pose. So go slowly. Let the tail sink down, let the head sink down, and just allow your back to decompress. So you take a few breaths here. And then one more. We're going to bring ourselves up onto our hands and knees. We're going to take a downward facing dog here. Now, 
If your shoulders and your upper back are very stiff, the chances are you, you take your downward dog with your shoulders much over your wrist. So it, it might look a, a, a bit like this, your, your downward dog. Think about opening your shoulders before you even start to lift your knees here. So your first action, rather than up, will be moving back. So here, your, your shoulders are open, your neck is relaxed, you're dropping your head down. So think of looking back through your, your knees. And then as you come up, be sure that you don't push your shoulders forward again. So you keep your shoulders back, you keep your neck as easy as you can, you come into your toe roots, you reach your heels back, and you open into dog this way. Now, don't worry about straightening your legs, really just think about keeping the shoulders open. Try not to lock your elbows, so we don't want to extend or overextend the elbows this way, we want to keep the elbows a bit soft, knees bent. And just think about opening the shoulders, releasing the head down. Let the weight of the head release your upper back and your thoracic spine. And just take another breath or two here if you can. If your hamstrings are super long and it's not going to push your shoulders forward, you can of course drop your heels a bit more. But make sure you're not making that your 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 priority, that's not your goal, okay? Your goal is to keep your shoulders wide open. When it feels like enough for you, you can lower down onto your knees. And we're gonna take ourselves over and onto our backs, so we're coming into a semi-supine position. Now, I want us to take a twist here, but I want the twist to be predominantly in the upper back and the thoracic spine. So, I'll do the left side first. The hips move over to the left, and the knees come over to the right. Now, rather than having your knees down low, bring your knees up high. So, your knees are, are higher than your hips. They're tucked in close towards you. Open out through your, your right arm, and then try and open through your left arm. So you're bringing this twist more into your upper back. By bringing your knees up higher, you're keeping your sacrum more um, perpendicular to the floor, okay? Your pelvis is more neutral. There'll be less twist um, coming through your, your pelvis and your lower back, and more twist in your upper back and your thoracic spine. So you can adjust the knees lower if it's too much for your upper back. Keep them nice and high if it feels good here for your upper back. You know that you can always support your knees by bringing a block underneath your legs. You just take your left arm as wide and as high as feels okay for you. So you're not bringing too much stress into your shoulder or your chest. Let me take a few breaths. You might find after a few breaths that you no longer need the support of a block, so you can always take it away. Let me take one more. Good. Do the same thing to the other side. So you come back to your center. Find your midline. When you're ready, you move your hips over to the right. You bring your knees over to the left, but remember to bring them up maybe a bit higher than you usually would in your twist. And then see if you can turn through your upper body, through your chest, your upper back. Use the elbows to help you shrug your left shoulder blade out from underneath you. Reach your right arm out. Find the best space that you can. You can always use that left hand 
to gently weight your legs. Use a block underneath your legs or a cushion underneath your legs if you need to. And you use your breath to open up space around the, the tight spots, the, the limitations. So the inhalation opens up the space and the exhalation helps you to soften and release. Take one more. When you're ready, use your feet, come back to your center. Make sure that you're on your midline. It's maybe good just to lift the head and check your alignment here. Hug the knees in towards you and just equalize your, your spine. We're going to take a, a moment or two to relax, but we're going to take our um, relaxation prone rather than supine today. So you're coming over and onto your front. If it's okay for you, Turn your head to one side, let the arms rest up and above your, your head. And you're breathing into your back again here. So just take two or three breaths. Try and breathe into your kidney space, into your back ribs. In between your shoulder blades. You feel the, the ripple of breath, of movement through your spine as you breathe. Turn your head. And again, you breathe into your back. You take the time here to notice any tight spots and try and be purposeful with your, your breath so you breathe into those tight spots, you breathe space into those tight spots. Good. If you feel that you'd like to just turn over and take a moment or two in a, a classic relaxation of Shavasana, you could do that here. If you feel that you're ready, you can just bring yourself up very slowly. You might just want to um, flex. You can drop back onto your heels so you come into Vrasana if it's um, comfortable for you, Vajrasana. And we'll just bring the hands in front of the heart. And 
take a bow forward and then close your practice. Slowly up. Namaste. Thank you.